Are you ever working on a client project and you're wondering where that file's gone or that piece of feedback that the client gave and you're just a bit confused about where everything is? I had this problem inside my agency and as we started to grow, it started to become a lot more stressful trying to find all these individual pieces of information. Then I learned about client workspaces and the idea to have everything in it just one place. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make a client workspace inside Coda.io. We're going to build some onboarding that's automated and allows you to collect the information quickly. We're gonna create task pages so you can collect feedback on different things that you're working on. And finally, we're gonna set up a Stripe billing portal so your clients can log in, view their invoices, and manage their subscriptions without having to bother you via email. Hopefully this is gonna save you some time. Let's get into it. We're inside uh, Coded.io and I always like to start off by building out the pages that we're going to need for this project. First of all, we can give the Docker name called Client Workspace and we can give it a little icon. Then we're going to go and create an onboarding page for our clients to visit. Task, we're going to add files and then finally we're going to want a home page. Let's start with onboarding. Onboarding is probably one of the most important parts that you want to try and automate. Information collection from clients can always be really long. But if you provide them with something that as soon as they log into their workspace, they can fill out, it's gonna speed up the process and it also keeps it in one place. So we never lose it and we always know where it is. So I'm in onboarding and I'm actually gonna use Coda's new AI tool to help me write this out. Write an onboarding intro for a company. I'll just get that to generate. And so we're just gonna create a call out here and we'll put our title into here. I love what the AI has written and I don't think we need to do anything different there. We'll then create another call out, an information icon on. I'm gonna quickly write out some stuff that I put in my own onboarding. So what we've done here is we've added a checkbox which the client can then come and tick these off. The reason that we have checkboxes inside our onboarding tutorial is to help the client feel like they're building progress towards the end of the tutorial. So now that that's done, I'm gonna just do two more sections. I want to do a bit about the company. Because this is a tutorial, I'm just going to use the AI. So I like what they, they wrote at the beginning. I'm just going to get rid of that. And sometimes what I'd like to do as well is just put a picture, a picture randomly from Unsplash. Again, you have to try and cover all your bases here. So if you want to talk a little bit about your company, put some pictures in, you're trying to get the client to understand who you are and what you do and get a little bit personal with the people that they're going to be working with. After that, I want to collect some information. We're going to put one of Coda's forms in here. So you can type slash form to do that. Client info. We're going to hit edit layout. Come in and just edit these questions. I want to know uh, your favorite part about your company. What does a great working relationship look like to you? And then finally, we're just going to add, what does a success look like to you? The idea here is, is that you capture as much information as you need from the client. But as well as that, it's a fun opportunity to learn a little bit more about your client on a personal level. Now we're just gonna hide that title so it all looks nice and neat. A page that I forgot to add, but you're going to want to add is an admin page. We're gonna take the form results table that gets generated when we bring that form in. I'm just gonna put it into the admin page because we don't need them to see the results. Then we're gonna do another call out and here you can do onboarding steps. It's gonna be based on the information that you need. I'm gonna add a checklist to here as well. So giving them steps to follow. Then in the onboarding steps, you might need to do a couple of things. So um, for example, completed the form, get rid of that one there just to make it a little bit neater. Added any files we need to app files. And submitted your first task for us to work on in tasks. And then after that, we want to just say, viewed your billing. So just make sure that everything that you need to capture from the client is in this step. I'm gonna make one final call out. Thank you. I can use Coders AI again, write a thank you message to the client. And then I always like to have a little checklist at the end, complete onboarding. We'll say next steps, go to at homepage where they can see the overview of their stuff. All right, so that's our onboarding done. Nice and simple. We've got a few things to do. This is gonna be very personal to your company. So take the time to make sure that this covers all the things that you need to collect from the client in order to be able to get started. Okay, we're gonna give this page a little icon and then we're gonna move on to the tasks. Now tasks is gonna be a very generic overview of where your client can view the project progress and how things are going. They're gonna be able to come into the tasks and leave feedback and that's the whole point of the system. Having just one central place for conversations 
So you're not having stuff on WhatsApp, email, etc. And instead it's just happening directly in their workspace at all times. So we're gonna go into tasks and get rid of page names. We'll do that in onboarding as well. I will add a icon to this page and we have all tasks down below. First of all, we need some an actual task table. I'm gonna create a tasks from this task template that Coda provides, which skips a lot of the setup for us. I'm gonna drag and drop this task button into our all task callout and I'm just gonna add a divider to make that neat. We're gonna call this all tasks, the table name, and I like to usually hide the title of the table. Now this is very simple, but if you would like to see a card view, we can go to cards, group, add group, status, and then you can either have it on the left or the top. I like the traditional Kanban view. And we'll just reorganize this to the left-hand side. Make sure as well that if you can't see statuses that you've added before, to show empty groups. And that way then you'll be able to see all of the tasks in a neat way. One final thing you can do to make this a bit bigger is go to layout and wide, which just gives us a bit more space to view things. Now, when we close this side panel, you can see everything fits in quite nicely. I'm gonna do one extra thing to this. When I open up this task, I want to be able to have a notes column as well so that we can then write anything that we want in here. And you can see you can add callouts and images, all sorts of things. That's great. This is really simple. And I'm happy with it. You'll notice here at the bottom that clients can leave comments. This is where you're going to have most of your conversations. For example, when this task is in review, they'll be able to leave their comments and uh, add anything that you need. Now this template doesn't have a review section. So we're just gonna go to column options and make sure we have a review section. I'm also gonna give it a different color, maybe a yellow, and we're gonna add on hold to red. Like so. Now when this gets moved to review, you can go to the comments, you can tag the client and you can say, hi Ropa, this is ready for review. Your client's then going to receive an email and they'll be able to come in and then start dropping in feedback for you. That's our task section done, nice and simple. Let's go into files. Again, we're going to turn off the page name and icon and we're going to give the page its own icon. One of the biggest problems I had when I was running my agency is separating where people are talking about tasks and where files are being uploaded. It's quite annoying having to always set up new Google Drive folders or onboard your client into how your organization system works. But by having, again, everything in one place, you can ensure that nobody's going to lose links to files, nobody's going to lose links to uploaded files. Instead, they're always going to be in the workspace. There's a theme here, which is everything is just in one place. Now that I'm in files, I'm going to just create another call out again. We'll call this files or all files, maybe. You can see here there's no template for slash files. So what we're going to do is just create a really simple table. Start from blank. We'll call this all files and then we're going to hide the title. We want to give the file a name. And then we also want to have a file link for G Drive. And then we'll also have a upload file. We're going to make this a column type, images and files, file. That means then they can just click this add button and add a file like so. We can add this tutorials thumbnail, for example. They can also paste in a link if they want to, for example, this doc. And they can add any notes that they want, but I don't think we need notes here. So I'm just going to get rid of the notes column like so. Now, if you want to make this a little bit more neater and a little bit more fun, you can change this to a card view and there we have it. We have our file, we have a link. If we need a link, we can just directly click that or we have the file actually uploaded inside Coda. We can click into this to open it up and we can see the file here to download. Again, we can leave comments for the client as well if we need something like, hey, this link doesn't work or I need it shared with me, etc. Finally, we're gonna add a add file button. What I'm gonna do is create another call out. I'm just gonna drag this to the right hand side of that file table. We're gonna make it a little bit smaller, the column. And we're just gonna do slash button, create a new button. We're gonna do add row, select all files. And we're just gonna name, rename this to add file. Now you can make this centered for those of you who are UI connoisseurs. And we can just center that there. Cool. If we want to open that file so they can add stuff, you can just do open row for editing. That means then when they click the new file button, it's gonna open up ready for them to fill out. Great, that's our file page done. Finally, we're gonna to go to admin. This is gonna be pretty loose in terms of stuff that's needed. We're gonna be able to see our form results here so you can see the onboarding for a client. And what I like to usually do is just hide this page because we're gonna be the only ones who need to see it. And then what you can also do is bookmark it so then it's ready for you to click on whenever you go. Now we just need to create a home page for them to be able to manage their stuff. Sometimes it's important to just give the client the information that's important to them at the time. For example, things that need to be reviewed or being able to edit their billing information. You don't want to always confuse them by getting them to go into certain pages. And providing a home page allows them to see an overall view 
the power projects coming along and also just general information about the work that they're doing so we're inside our homepage. We're just going to add a icon for this. So maybe we'll give them a castle here. Lovely. Uh, what we're going to do again is just hide this page name and icon. We're going to do another call out, call it homepage. Now there's a couple of things that we want them to be able to do here. First of all, we can create a divider and we're going to create a new button. And this button is going to open a hyperlink. We're just going to an empty link in here at the moment. And we're going to call this view billing so they can go in and view their invoices and subscriptions if you're running a subscription model. Just give it a generic icon like so. Now we're gonna add free spaces just so we can space these buttons out a bit. We're gonna add a new button again, another open hyperlink, and this one's gonna be called book a call. And that's gonna open up either a Calendly or you can put your phone number in here, whatever you see fit that allows them to communicate with you. We're then going to create another call out we're going to call this tasks ready for review. Maybe give it a little bit of space, perhaps add a divider to show that it's separate from the top section. And we're just going to type slash all tasks. And you see here it creates a view. So we're going to do all tasks. And then I'm going to filter these to just to the status. And the status is going to be review. So now they're going to be able to view the tasks that are ready for them to review they can open those up and start leaving comments for you as well. Now, you have to imagine that sometimes your clients aren't gonna be that woke when it comes to using tools like Coda. So something that I like to add just for UX is a button that's just going to be an open row button. It's gonna be this row. And what we'll do is just rename it to open. And we'll call it open task. And I like to put these at the very beginning so they can very quickly just open that up and look at it. Finally, maybe you want to add cards. You can then go to card display, show column labels so they can see what's going on. And then I tend to like to have the button at the bottom a little bit more cleaner. So then when the task is ready for review, they can just open it up and go in. And usually these are the only tasks that they're going to need to see. By placing the important information in front of your client, they know exactly what they need to do when they log in. And having this review system where you're not confusing them with hundreds of tasks, instead you make it very simple for them. You're helping them make the process a lot faster, meaning that you can complete this project hopefully a bit quicker as well. The final step is setting up the billing. And to do that, we're gonna go into Stripe. So we're in Stripe and I've turned on test mode just so that we can see it as if it was from your perspective. You're gonna want to go to products and here you can add your own product. We can call it our design subscription, for example. You can add an image and all that stuff. For now, I'm just gonna add some basic test data and then you can give them that link to pay. The reason that we use Stripe is because it can help us automate a lot of the payments that we receive from clients. But as well as that, they provide this really cool payment portal that allows clients to log in and view their invoices and manage their subscriptions without needing to have you involved, which means that we can automate that back and forth that usually goes on when a client wants to get their invoices, change something about their subscription, or just view some of the things that they've been paying for over the course of your relationship. Once they've paid, we want to then be able to give them the option to be able to log in and view their invoices. You can do that in Stripe by typing in billing portal at the top and go to settings, billing, customer portal. You can see here that when somebody logs in, they can see that the subscription or plan that they've got with me. You can see down here, it's got the invoice history and we can activate a test link. What we're gonna do then is copy this customer portal link that they've given us. We're gonna go back to that view billing button and we're gonna add that to the URL. I also use cal.com for my booking of calls. So I'm gonna put that in there so they can always book a call with me if they have any problems. Finally, you're gonna to want to add a couple of things that are gonna make the space feel more like your clients. You can also go through and edit the details, including adding page covers or filling out that onboarding a bit more, just to make the whole experience feel a bit more branded around your company. And you haven't already looked at my video on how to organize your business inside Coda.io, I would watch this video next.